Imagine you walk into a school atrium and you see hundreds of flags. Each and every single one of those flags is representing a student at the school. Imagine for third period, you have African American Studies class. This is a class filled to the brim with students of different ethnicities as you all attentively listen to your teacher passionately teach about historical figures. Imagine listening to those same peers relating their personal struggles to those depicted in those historical figures from decades ago. I had the honor of experiencing all of this and more on a trip to Long Reach High School last year. This trip was both emotional and revolutionary for me. And the significance of this combination made me consider why the environment had made such an impact. I realized several things. In the past 14 years of schooling, I've had 68 teachers. From those 68, only five are minorities. And from those five, only one is still teaching. In addition, the curriculum itself and the way it's taught lack adequate representation, especially when you consider student demographics. You see, in Howard County, we have 60,000 students in our school system. From this population, only 35% are white. Yet the overwhelming majority of our literature in schools is catered towards this one population. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's okay. There are plenty of books in our curriculum that represent people of color as well. And you're not wrong, but this literature isn't required. You see, it's placed on a chart like this one where a teacher has to pick one book each unit. So when a book like Invisible Man is pinned versus The Great Gatsby, the teacher will probably pick The Great Gatsby. And that's not because they don't want to teach The Invisible Man, it's because it's The Great Gatsby. Now, that probably means that most of you know who Huckleberry Finn is from The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn but you've never heard of Siyan from the Joy Luck Club. In addition, personally, I've read about 30 books over the past seven years in my English classes. From these 30 books, one was by a Latin American author, one was by a Chinese author, one was by a Persian author, and absolutely none of them were by African Americans. In fact, the closest I got to reading a book by an African American is a book called Black Like Me, written by a white man, John Howard Griffin, who tries to prove that racism exists in 1950s America by temporarily changing his skin color. As for the Persian author, well, she wrote the graphic novel Persepolis. This is a memoir depicting her childhood in Iran during the 1970s. I personally found this story very moving. It was emotional, and her story deserves to be heard but I felt as though she drew broad generalizations. She didn't differentiate between the religion, traditions, and government that she was speaking of. In addition, I felt as though the depictions that she had, especially the graphics, were very offensive. In Islam, like in many other religions, it's considered offensive to draw the divine. Not only did she draw God several times, she compared his appearance to scientists of the time period. At this point in, my novel, in reading the novel, I realized this book was not written with a student like me in mind at all. In addition, my peers started to develop a misunderstanding of what Islam actually is. For example, I started getting questions like whether or not the jewelry on my wrists were an example of me rebelling against my religion, the way that the people in the novel did to rebel against their government. Now, I'm not upset at my peers for asking these questions. I'm happy they're asking me and not just Googling it. But I am upset that their eagerness to learn more is in no way reciprocated in the classroom. I wish that Persepolis had helped to stop the ignorant preconceived notions I was getting in and outside of the classroom over the years, not to amplify them. But let's be real. Even if Persepolis was the book of my dreams, the one I've been waiting for my whole life, it would have been later than Ryan Gosling in The Notebook. I mean, <laughs> by sophomore year, I sat in classrooms with teachers carelessly throwing around opinions like the British and French should own the Suez Canal, and I listened to them endlessly lecture me on what my ethnicity actually is. 
In addition, my peers start to develop misunderstandings as well. I remember that in many debates, they would ask me whether or not I'd even ever been to the Middle East. And once they realized I'm Muslim, they would literally stand up and move across the room. Now, I'm gonna share an experience of mine from when I was in seventh grade. I don't share it often though, because it's one of my less fond of memories. <laughs> I was in seventh grade and I just found out that I was going to Egypt again that summer. And so excitedly, I made rounds and asked all my friends what they wanted as gifts. But after all these years, one conversation still remains. I was asking someone what they wanted, if they collected mugs or keychains, and they kept on saying, Farah, bring me back world peace. Well, I didn't know how to respond to that, and on my third time asking him what he wanted, a student interrupts to say, you won't get him world peace because you are a terrorist. Now, the comment itself, it did not sting. It didn't sting because I understand that this student has a misunderstood preconceived notion based on media, probably a relative or something. But what did sting was the person I was offering a gift to, my teacher, laughing. My teacher laughed like it was the funniest joke of the century. I mean, his hand was pounding on his desk, his face was red. But the worst part of this memory for me is when I chuckled. And I went to sit back in my seat as quickly as possible. You see, at this point in the year, my friend and I, we were both together in this class, we had this joke that each time the teacher told us to be quiet or to take a seat, she would threaten to stand on her chair. When I went back to sit down, I realized I really should be standing on my chair. Now, I understand that this happened a while ago, but I still think of it a lot. But if we have students that are still walking into schools now with these preconceived notions and baseless claims, isn't it the educational system's job, and isn't it us as a school's job to properly educate them? How are we going to do that if all of our literature is written by the same white man writing with a quill and calling me a moor? Now, I feel as though that there should be a wide variety of literature in our school system. Literature that helps everyone understand everything about different ethnicities from across the world and of different time periods throughout history. I feel as though a book like Persepolis can be understood for being complex and being truly unique if we had more diversity in our curriculum, not a wide sweeping generalization of history. I also feel as though that by not representing everyone in the curriculum, you're validating these preconceived notions. But if we start to emphasize the importance of diversity in the curriculum, if we, start to, if we start to emphasize the importance of diversity in the curriculum, then we can develop real changes. It upsets me a lot when I read books outside of school that properly represent diverse communities because you almost never see them in the classroom. In fact, the National Council of Teachers of English recently submitted a post and they emphasized the importance of making sure that everyone is represented especially in indigenous and people of color's communities. They said that not only are these marginalized communities deprived of the opportunity to be represented, but so are white, um, white students and teachers because they don't gain a better understanding of the intricately connected constellations of histories and literatures of the United States. Now, we have teachers in our school system that are amazing and they're working towards diversifying our school system and they're by far some of the best people I've ever had the, the opportunity of interacting with. And with people like them, we can start seeing more examples of the classroom I got to visit at Long Beach High School last year. Personally, I am currently serving on a advisory council. It's called the, um, the Howard County General, the Howard County Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Advisory Council. 
This advisory council is aiming to not only diversify our staff, but also educate peers and students on how to properly teach diverse curricula. These teachers are some of the best people I've gotten to interact with throughout this year, and I'm honored to have gotten the opportunity. But the best part of this council is that it was started by peers and people in our community pressuring the school system to add and address bias in the curriculum. So right now, these are people who faced a sort of discrimination. They spoke up about it, and real change is happening. So I'm going to leave you with this. The next time that someone tells you to be quiet and take a seat, grab one and stand on it. Thank you.